So you've gotten familiar with the base R syntax, and you're starting to realize it takes a lot of effort to manipulate and work with data frames. Even basic things like filtering rows and selecting columns may start out simple, but the more you want to do, the more variables you have to make, and the more unreadable your code becomes. Enter dplyr, an R package for data wrangling that allows you to easily chain together operations, speeding up your workflow, and it makes your code much more readable. In this video, I'll cover the essentials of dplyr and go over some common data manipulation scenarios you'll likely face. The first step is going to be to install the dplyr package once with install.packages.dplyr and then load it into your project with library dplyr. The data frame we're going to be working with is from Kaggle and it contains the Billboard Hot 100 songs of the week for each week dating back to 1958. I trimmed the data to only include the last 10 years, but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to play with the data set. Looking at the data set, there's a column for the date that week, the song title, and its rank for that week, along with some more metrics about the song's rank history and how many weeks it's been on the Billboard Hot 100. So let's start learning some dplyr. The first concept we're going to cover is something you'll see being used in dplyr a lot. The percent greater than percent is used for piping, which is when everything that comes before the pipe is evaluated and then passed in as the first argument into the function that comes right after the pipe. So if we want to grab the top 10 rows of our data frame, in base R we might do something like head, billboard 100, and then 10. But with piping, it would be billboard 100 piped into head 10. And that gives us the same thing. It obviously doesn't make much sense to pipe in this case, but it does end up making our life easier when we start chaining functions together. Another quick thing to note is that when you want to pass what comes before the pipe into your function as something other than the first argument, you can explicitly specify that with the period. And piping doesn't only apply to data frames, so we could write the same expression as 10 piped into head of billboard 100, and then comma period. So the 10 would go in that spot, and we can run that. Now let's start working with our data frame. There are a few functions in dplyr I want to go over, and we can group them into a few different categories. There are the column operations, select and mutate, the row operations, filter, distinct, arrange, and then the group operations, group by, summarize, and count. The first dplyr function we're going to look at is select, which is pretty self-explanatory. It selects the columns of your data frame that you specify, and then drops the rest. So for this example, we want to select the date, the rank, the song, the artist, and the weeks on board columns. And we can do this by passing in our column names as arguments into select. So after billboard 100, we will call the select function with our pipe, and we'll select the date, the rank, the song, the artist, and weeks on board because it's using these special characters, these hyphens, we actually have to put it in either quotes or back ticks. So we'll write weeks on board and we can run this. And now we just have those five columns. To make it a little easier, we can actually use the colon between two column names and it'll grab both specified columns and then the ones in between. So we'll copy this code and paste it right under. And instead of date, rank, song, and artist, we can just do date colon artist. And this is great if you have a lot of columns. And I also wanna rename this weeks on board column to weeks popular. And I can do that in the same select function just by writing weeks popular and setting it equal to weeks on board. And if I run that, I get the same data frame as before, but now this column is renamed. Another way of selecting would be by explicitly writing the names of the columns we don't want to select and then adding a minus in front of it. So in this case, if we look at our original data frame, we're getting all the columns except for last week and peak rank. So going back to our code for select, we can put in minus last week minus peak rank. And that'll give us the same thing, except we want to use that other function to rename the weeks on board column. Also, one quick thing to note is that each time I'm running this code, I'm not actually rewriting or overwriting the Billboard 100 data frame. I'm just printing out what the result is. If you wanted to save it, you'd actually have to reassign that variable. But as a general rule, I'd actually recommend not using the same variable name because you might run into a situation where you can run your code once and it works fine. But if you run it again, you'll get an error because we renamed this column weeks on board to weeks popular. And when we run it the second time, that weeks on board column no longer exists. So I'm actually going to go back to the top and reset my data frame by reading in the original CSV, and I'll get rid of this. But going back to our select function, there are actually a few more ways of selecting columns because you can use helper functions. I'm not going to cover them in this video, but I will leave a link to this cheat sheet down in the description, and it includes more info about the select function, but also all the other dplyr functions. So next we're going to move on to mutate. If you want to add new columns to our data frame, we can use the mutate command. Similar to select, it can take any number of arguments, and it allows you to specify what you want the new name of the column to be. So if we go back to our billboard 100 data frame, we see that there are a lot of rows where there's a featuring artist. And I think it'd be interesting to have a new column that tells us whether or not the song was a collaboration, or in other words, whether or not the word featuring appears in the artist column. So we're gonna 
pipe again and call the mutate function. And we'll create a new column called is collab, which is just whether or not the song was a collaboration. And we're going to use the grepl function here, which is built into base R and it takes in a pattern to search for and then the text to search within, and it'll return either true or false for each of these rows. So we're searching for the word featuring and we're searching in the artist column. And if we run that, we get this column at the end called is collab. And a quick little trick, if we wanna have the artist and is collab columns to be the first two columns in our data frame, we can actually create another select and then select the artist column, is collab column, and then everything, which will just grab the rest of the columns. And now you can see that it's reordered. And let's just go through a couple of pages just to make sure that is collab looks right. So it looks good there. Yep, these look good to me. So those were the two main column functions. Now we're gonna go on to the row functions. And we're gonna start with filter. So filter can extract rows that meet one or more criteria. So if we wanted to select all the songs where the number of weeks popular is greater than 20, we can go down here. We'll paste this code in just to get our data frame. And we're gonna filter for weeks popular is greater than or equal to 20 and run that. And now we only get songs in our data frame where it meets that condition. And as I mentioned, we can pass multiple arguments into filter if we want multiple conditions. So we want the songs where weeks popular is greater than or equal to 20. And also the artist is equal to Drake. And now we get only his popular songs. If we wanna use the or condition, so we want where the songs were popular for more than 20 weeks and the artist is either Drake or Taylor Swift, we could use the vertical bar and say that the artist is equal to Drake or artist is equal to Taylor Swift. And now we get both of their songs, but it still meets that first condition that weeks popular is greater than or equal to 20. Now, another quick note is that these are only gonna grab the songs where the artist name is exactly equal to Taylor Swift or Drake, but not the ones where there might be a featuring artist just because the strings won't be equal. So now let's say we want only the song titles of these Drake songs. If we were to filter him and select the song row, we'd actually have a lot of duplicates as you can see here, because a lot of these songs were on the Hot 100 for multiple weeks. So that's where the distinct function comes in and you can pass whichever columns you want and it'll give you distinct rows. So we'll paste the code that we wrote before and we just want the Drake songs. We'll add another function onto the end of this called distinct song. And I want all the Drake songs, so I'm gonna get rid of this other filter and we can run that. And now we get 95 of his songs, but it's still in a data frame. If we wanted this in a vector format, we can use that period that I mentioned earlier for piping. And essentially we can use it as a placeholder for the data frame. So now it's signifying that this is the data frame and then we can grab that column called song. So if we print this out, it'll give us a character vector with the song names. Now onto the grouping operations. These are a little trickier to work with, but they become really powerful for doing data analysis. If we wanted to get all the Drake songs and order them by the week's popular column, it'd be a little difficult because the week's popular column can be different for the same song, as you see here. This is because Billboard releases its data each week. So if a song is on their Hot 100 again, its week popular column will be higher this week than all the previous weeks. Now, one solution would be to group the songs by song name and then determine the max number of weeks popular for each of those songs. So our end goal is to essentially get a data frame of distinct song names along with the number of total weeks they showed up in the Hot 100. So we'll first start by calling the group by function and we wanna group by the song name. Now this group by function, if we run the code, it actually won't do anything to begin with. It's implicitly grouping our data, but you need to call one of the group functions on it afterwards. So we're gonna call the summarize function, which essentially summarizes data into a single row of values for each of the groups. And we need to pass in a summary function. So we're trying to find out the highest number that weeks popular is for each of these song titles. So we're gonna use the max function. So we'll call max weeks popular. And just like before with select and mutate, we can rename this column. So we'll call it total weeks popular and set it equal to this max weeks popular. And we can run that. And now we get each of the song names. As you can see, there are 95 songs, just like how there were 95 distinct songs before. And we get the max number that they were weeks popular. Now there are other summary functions too, like mean, min, and again, these are on that cheat sheet, but I'll put a link to that in the description. It looks like these songs are in alphabetical order, but let's say we want to sort them by this total weeks popular column. So we're gonna use the arrange function, and I've grabbed the same code from before, except now I'm just gonna pipe at the end arrange, and this will take in one or more columns, so we can pass in total weeks popular. By default, it'll do this in ascending order, but we want this in descending order, 
So we can just wrap this in DESC for descending. And we also want it to default to being in alphabetical order if the total week's popular numbers are the same. So we can pass in a second column into a range for the song title, and now we run this. And we can see that where the songs tie, it's still in alphabetical order. But now grabbing the top 10 or top 15 would be really easy. We could just call head 10 right after, and it would just give us the top 10 rows of the songs that were the most popular. So the last function we're gonna go over, which is similar to group by, is count, which will count the number of rows for each unique value in the column or columns that you specify. So if we wanted to find the total number of times that each artist shows up in our data frame, we can simply write count artist, which will create a default column called n with each of the artist names. And you can see here the data is not very clean because obviously two chains is being listed here multiple times, but we're gonna ignore that for now. But if we wanna get this into descending order by n, we can just arrange descending n. And now we can see the artists that showed up in our data set the most number of times. So even though there are a lot more dplyr functions, these are the ones you'll likely find yourself using the most. In the next video, I'm gonna cover a few more scenarios where dplyr can really come in handy, including cleaning up a data set, piping your data directly into a graph, and merging data sets together to gain further insights. If you found this video helpful, I'd definitely appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.